name is Stephen Rafferty and you are watching slash listening to These Are Questions. This is the interview show where I ask people questions about things, life, and such not. And today we are here at the Cole Lab Studios here in Miami, Florida, and we are interviewing various talents and professionals and cool, awesome people, cool humans, and specifically I have a hu cool human right in front of me. Um, she is a very talented photographer and a very, very unique, creative individual. Please welcome and actually, let's actually transcend, let's transcend to this episode of These Are Questions <laughs> with my very talented guest. Please welcome Sophia. Hi. Woo -hoo, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Welcome to These Are Questions. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you for being a part of the show. I really do appreciate it. We're gonna get right into the episode itself. So I'm gonna ask you, Sophia, I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. It's gonna be based around your career, and aspirations, along with a mixture of questions that are borderline idiotic and, well, randomly stupid. I'm excited. You're excited? A okay. little nervous, but... That's kind of the theme for the show. Yeah. It's a lot of excitement, a lot of nervousness. If you're me, it's a lot of internal stresses and pressures, but don't worry about that. You don't want that. You don't want that. You just want the excitement. You look chill. Oh, I try. Oh, thank you. That means I'm doing my yeah, job. Yeah, you're doing great. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Doing my job, doing my job. Um, with that, I'll take that as a, as a yes for everything. So, um, Sophia, are you ready? I'm ready. Go. Internet, are you ready? <laughs> we'll find out, <laughs> but I'm gonna start anyway. With that, let's begin our interview. So thank you so much for being a part of These Are Questions. I really appreciate it. And we met, um, we've been here for over a year now. Uh, we met through um, a promotional plug here for Save the Creatives. Uh, we met at one of their uh, Save the Creatives events um, at another studio. And uh, I really liked the way you were doing your photos. And I was like, this is unique and different, pun intended. Aww, so thank you. you're very welcome. You're very welcome. And we sit together through various projects. We're even part of a certain club that involves cameras. You can say it's a camera club. Um, shout out to the boys in there. Shout out to the teams <laughs> on there. Um, I want to talk to you about how you got into the photography scene and what made you be Become said photographer. So I always say that it's the story of when I ran away to Chicago because I was like, cool, like this is not what I want to be doing. Okay. I thought I wanted to be like a therapist and just, you know, have this kind of thing every day. But then I thought I can't be in one place every single day and not be bored. So I ran away and I was, I just literally had no idea what I wanted to do. But as I was in Chicago, I would just like spend a lot of my time walking, looking around the buildings and just being really inspired. And I started to love life a lot more. So I was like, oh my God, the world is saturated. Do other people see the world this way? Like I need to find a way to make sure that other people feel what I feel. Not all the time, but like, is there a way to do that? And then I remembered that when I was a kid, I used to dream up like entire music videos just during car rides. I'm like, wait, what if I do camera stuff? What if I just go back to like young me's little version of dreaming and figure that out? And then I just would like look up a bunch of YouTube things and then that's essentially how I started taking photos. Cause I was like, yeah, the camera will be used. Mm. And the camera chose you, you can say yeah. indirectly. That's cool. That's cool. And I always say it for those that like with school and I, and I encourage education um, to a certain extent, but for some individuals that may not be the way to go and it may not be the right path for you. You have to find what's the right path for you in your life. And I feel like there's a level of like life path of like, there's an idea of things that you could do, but how you get to it is how you uniquely get to it in your own unique life. Yeah. 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 I mean, I agree. If school's not for you, that's okay. You don't need it. But I didn't eventually end up going back to study photography and like all the things within the media space. Mm -hmm. And even then I thought I would do like animation, but then I realized I don't want to be in front of a computer. No, I like people. So that's why photography kind of stuck up above anything else that was creative that I could have done because I knew I didn't want to do journalism or any other kind of like pathway that there was. I'm just like, how do I connect to people? Because now I can say it's not just about like, oh, look at the shot I'm taking or look at the edit that I made. It's more about connecting with people. And yeah, it's like the camera has allowed me to do that in a way that nothing else has. So. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely. You definitely tell like the story behind the lens and like you're building that relationship to get the best photos possible. So like there's a, a lot of people that get into photography are just like, oh, I just take the pictures and boom, boom, boom. Right. But no, you're telling stories and you're building those relationships to get those photos. And it's very important to have that. And like, that's my favorite part of photography is mm -hmm. not necessarily the photos, even though I really like the photos. It's the actual relationships I build with the people that I work with. 100%. Mm -hmm, I agree with that. And uh, speaking of photos, what's your current camera setup? Like, what do you use right now? I use a Sony a7 III. Nice. You got the best. We're like, oh, just Sony? <laughs> I'm like, well, it's not about the equipment, but yeah, that's my answer. Okay, simple, simple <laughs> answer. And and I always say it's not about the equipment. It's about the person using it because you yeah. can get like a $10,000 red camera, right? For example, videography, but you could film it in like 240 pixels and just film it like a potato. Yep. Or you can get an actual potato right an actual potato that you can eat and make like fries and stuff and get like the greatest photos and videos ever you know i love that people might not know that you're joking but like you can you can yeah potato so that's really cool yeah yeah absolutely absolutely it's all about the how you take the time and learn those tools to get the best thing possible for what you're trying to do with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's cool and you know I remember for like camera club, we shot in like different locations and different things. And I, there's like a cool area around the Fort Lauderdale ship that we were shooting. But I want to ask like, what was one of the coolest locations you've done a photo shoot um, before? Um, it's not something that I think people would feel like is cool, but I had a lot of fun during the photo shoot. So uh -huh. here we have so many different types of trees and foliage and just animals. I love Florida's variety. And these trees are like trees that grow on water, but they have really tall roots. So basically, like, I couldn't be in the water because we don't know what's in there. But I climbed a bunch of roots to get to the top of the roots of one part of the tree. And then as I was on the roots, I made, like, the other person go <laughs> climb the roots. So we're both, like, kind of balancing on water, trying not to get bit up by mosquitoes and or fall into, like, potential alligators. And, yeah, it was, like really beautiful photos those were her favorite ones because within that shoot we did a bunch of different locations but mm -hmm. i just felt like a monkey girl taking camera taking photos with my camera and i love that i was just in a tree that's pretty cool like you get the behind the scenes of the tree itself but like also like you're kind of like parkouring and like in the sense of like jumping yeah. from tree to tree you know Literally. yeah oh well, that's dangerous though i respect that i couldn't you know i would wipe out pretty bad like i remember when we were doing camera club i was like safety do you want to jump yeah. this do you want to do this i'm like i'm not you know I, do it. yeah do it. Uh, hurt, yeah 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 I, I say that because I, when I did a lot of photography early on, I used to be very guerrilla filmmaking and I still am at times, you know, you have to do it sometimes. Right. Um, but I get wiser as time goes on and like a eh, certain thing, you know what I mean? I learned it the hard way the first time and I do it the second time, you know, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. unless the shot's worth it, obviously. Yeah. I guess I haven't had like such an experience where I'm like, mm -mm, we're not doing that again. Cause okay. I would cry, climb a tree again. That's good. It's good to know. You made a record on these are questions. Sophia will climb a tree to get the right shot for you. <laughs> Put that on like your testimonial or like yeah. your, uh, your uh, guarantees. We'll guarantee that. Well, yeah. And actually within that shoot, I didn't end up going in the water. I was like right here with the camera leg. So I will do multiple things in nature just to get the shot. Okay, fair enough. It's part of the game. Sometimes if, you get, if it's a shot is worth it, you'll do what you need to do to get said shot. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll know as a photographer when it's worth it and when it's not. So... Very cool. Very cool. Uh, I'm going to switch gears here and ask you a very uh, important question here on These Are Questions. The question I want to ask you is, um, do you think that a dragon can fit into a corporate nine to five job position? It depends on the type of dragon. Okay. My first gut reaction was like, no, never. And then I saw a dragon that like wears glasses, loves to have his normal cup of coffee every day. And just like he's like a monotone routine guy. I feel like there would be a kind of dragon that would be down to do that. But... The dragon species in general, no. Okay. They are too wild, too free to too. be doing nine to five. Okay, you can't. Maybe the outlier may do it, but not the majority. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to know. I'm a strong dragon. I do too. <laughs> I, I could feel the energy going back and forth on that with that question there. Um, so I'm gonna follow up here. Um, I have this uh, folder and I have a pen. I just want to ask, uh, can you write me a poem? Oh man, I thought you were gonna ask me to doodle. You can too if it, if it makes sense a haiku. for the poem. Okay. Oh, that's I, even harder. I don't harder. Even know the rules for a haiku, though. It's it's um, a f uh, f five, seven, five. Five syllables, seven syllables, uh, five. Syllables? How about words? The, okay. The, the, a poem no. about anything? It could be anything. It could be about dragons, okay, okay. corporate nine to fives, photos, questions, mm -hmm. red hair. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> no pressure. 
some pressure. Okay, it might be a lot of pressure. Mid-size pressure, please. That's the best kind of pressure, mid-size. <laughs> it's not overly too much pressure, and it has some pressure to move it's to make you do things. Slightly bigger than fun size. Oh, that's what Sophia said. <laughs> okay. Mm. Got this. I believe in you. Look away. I'm not. I'm fine. Fine. Look away. Fine. Fine. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I swear. Okay, I might be peeking a little bit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I swear, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. No, 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 no. The editors behind are gonna be like, "My goodness, Stephen, what are you doing?" I'm like, I'm doing for the entertainment for the show. It's for the questions. It's gonna for be the worth people. it. For the internet. For the internet. For the void. It's, okay. I love the void. Okay, can I open my eyes? Um. Yes. Okay. But I have no poem yet. So give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> that could have been the poem right there. <laughs> open your eyes. What do you see? No poem. <laughs> Oh, damn, that would have been a good one. No. I would have been existential for the rest of the ride home, though. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I love that I get to write on a journal. It's really just a piece of paper. Yeah, okay, uh, we keep it classy here on these are questions. We need papers when you have folders and journals. I'm going to keep this, you know, when you get, well, you're already big, but when you get really, really big in your photos, I'm going to keep this and be like, yes, she wrote this on this episode. Frame it, please. I will. I'll frame it. I'll, I'll take the photograph here and put it on the episode. Ooh. I will. I will. Please. I will. I want it. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> I will go to the dollar store, get a frame, like, as soon as this episode's over. Hold on. We're at the peak of the poem. This Ooh. is the turning point. Turning point. Turning point. Mm. Could let your creative juices glow. Oh, you might go. not know that that says this. is the very important part of the show what if it doesn't turn what if it just ends <laughs> that's also a poem right there too <laughs> okay this is my poem <laughs> okay okay you want me to read it out i'll read it out yeah, I'll read yeah. it out. Okay. but like with your reader voice <clears throat> what i don't have a reader voice if it was you a have a podcaster voice and a regular person voice i have a steven voice i have the the best voice i have a voice you have the best voice the show has the best voice okay what am i talking about um <clears throat> is there a title for this poem or no curls Oh, thank you. I have nice curls. You have nice curls. Um, that was Anspo. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> okay. <Jeez>. okay. <clears throat> curls. The bounce house mouse. I can't read this. <laughs> I can't read your handwriting. <laughs> I was doing so good. I couldn't you read were. that word. <laughs> you were. I was doing so good. Okay. Whisper it to you. Okay. 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 Twist. Twist. Oh, that's twist? That's a G. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Uh, sorry, I got it, 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 don't worry, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, okay, curls, composure, composure, who needs, never, it's not going on, we don't need composers, I'm just screaming in my microphone to get the editors upset, um, curls, Curls? Okay, curls. Girls! Girls! Wait, what? This is a different kind of poem now. You're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> um, all right, all right, all right. We got this, we got this, guys. Curls. The bounce house mouse twists and turns and yearns and falls and twirls. The end. <laughs> that was a poem. That was the full poem. Full poem by Sophia of Let's Transcend. That book comes out April 20th. <laughs> I was gonna say it's 2024. I was like, we are we, we, we past that now. <laughs> this this episode's coming out in the summer, my man. Not in the fall, as mentioned before, or so, indirectly. You saw the time it took to write that one poem. That, that, I, I need time. That that, that 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 could be the next poem. I need time. You you got to sign it. You got you got to put your signature next to it though. I know it's official. Put your you got to put that signature. That's okay. It's gonna be really hard to cut that and make a frame out of it, but it's fine. Don't worry about you got it. it. Do I'm I? You. Thank you. Really. Oh, thank you. No one's ever said that to me. Stop. <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Composure. <laughs> questions. These are questions. Um, could you ride a surfboard in a skate park? Yes. Okay. Have you done that before? No. Do you want to? Yes. If I had a surfboard, which I don't, but if I did, if I gave it to you, would you do it? 
I don't know how expensive surfboards are. Yeah, why not? Okay, I'll think about that time. I don't know if I'm going to get the segment ready for it, but if I get that segment going, I'll put it in the episode. Probably won't. I mean, you've had no other stipulations, so I have a request to make. Okay. What's the request? Like, get a huge tub of slime to prep the area the, so that I glide oh, oh, on okay. hard cement. Oh, okay. Okay. That's, I don't know how expensive slime is. That's probably a lot of money. you got to figure it out. Oh. These are the questions. Uh, these are not these are requests. These are, these are questions, not requests. But I'll, I'll make a note of it. I'll try. Okay. I'll, I'll do my research. Okay. I'll do a Google search I and see. It. Yeah, of course. No, I'm here, here to make you, one, comfortable. And two, ask you stupid questions. So it, it's fine. It's fine. It works. It works. Um, on your official website, which I'll plug it in for this episode, it'll be you know in the description. Um, you state that you are a observer of all things. How does that saying correlate with your mindset and mindset specifically when you're taking your photos? So... I guess to address the mindset part of the question, mm -hmm. when I was writing my website, I got very existential. I was like, who the fuck am I as a photographer? That could be the start of it right there. Am I just going <laughs> to be like, I will capture the moment for you, stopping time in one shot, like anything cliche, I just was like, this doesn't even feel like me. Mm -hmm. So at the root of it all, I think any photographer is an observer. You're taking the time to capture a moment. Personally, I shoot like, let's hope I got that one, like, ugh, and then pretend that that is not how I shoot, but that's 100% how I shoot. But at the end of the day, like, we're observing things, we're observing the beauty in things, and so I felt like that needed to be said, I guess, at that point. That's my answer for the mindset part of the question. But in terms of, in my actual photo shoots, yeah, I could be observing the light, yeah, I could be observing, like, if the hair is on your face, or if a little, if your arm is looking awkward and like your hand is like this and sort of like this, like, yeah, you okay. know, I could be observing that, True. but I'm also observing like body language, the things that you can't really talk about. I'm not going to tell you like, Hey, why are you awkward? Like I can't come at you with that kind of energy, but if I'm observing like, Oh, you're just like still a little bit shy. Maybe I, realistically, I'm going to be like, Hey, let's just like take a little break. Do you want to do a little dance party? And then like I'll start shaking or whatever info I know about the person, because usually it's people I know based off of like the conversations I've had with them before the shoot or just like seeing their own social media. Um, I don't know. I just try to observe like the other little things that probably another photographer is not looking at. Did you eat? Why do you look so like dehydrated? And then I'll talk to you about like, mm. oh, you had a crazy like rager last night. Cool. Okay. So after the shoot, you're going to go sleep, right? Right. So the faster we get the shoot done, the faster you can go get your nap, like things like that. That's good. That's good communication there. Um, and I feel like with photography in general, communication is incredibly important. And like not just about the actual shoot or the. Yeah, I'm moving in. I can do it anyway. It's my, it's my show. It's not my equipment, but it's my show. Why not? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Collab. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. It's. It, you guys are a great studio. I'm, I apologize. Um, I was going to say communication is incredibly important, not just for the um, actual photos itself, but also like the relationship and what you're building. And like the fact that you were tr uh, asking for concern for your talent there is very important, not just for the photos, but also for their own well-being and safety. Um, if the talent is unfit or unwell or something's going on, having that relationship building piece makes all the difference and also gives me more trust as a client hiring you uh because it's like oh she's not just here to take the pictures whatever she's actually caring about my well-being and actually wants to take care of me and make sure i'm doing okay um so everything is good you know so it's the little things definitely yeah and um you know uh, i would like to ask um what's a musing pun intended because you know musing you're musing directly um you do your all very uh fantasy like projects and she said some incredible photos and i'll put a display or maybe you'll send me stuff i'm not sure how it's gonna go but i'll put it on the thing incredible photos but i want to ask you know what's amusing pun intended again um piece of advice that you can give for aspiring creators and aspiring creatives who want to get more in that photography space loaded question nah 
I just thought about like all the different avenues that you could take with photography, right? Like I think of you. Well, okay. I could. I think of you as a person, and then I think of you as your photography. As a person, I love like your fun energy, and as a photographer, I love your directing capabilities. And then your photos, are, like, I I don't think I would niche you down into anything. Although I do know that like you have more experience in the fashion space. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, whether you want to be fashion space, wedding, newborn, conceptual, whatever your photography desire ends up being, like my piece of advice would be to find community because sometimes you don't even know that there are all these different kinds of ways to be creative. But when you talk to people who are already in it or who also want to be in it, you can ask questions, you can dream together, you can like recommend each other and help each other out and just have fun because it's not about just growing and like one-upping each other. What I love about the photography community is that we can help each other and collaborate with each other. So just collaborate with people, go to the meetups, mm -hmm. ask questions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do it. Don't expect for the equipment to come and give you like the perfect shot because it's about you just getting out there and doing it. I agree. 100 percent especially when you're just getting into it like you just got to try kind of a little bit of everything mm -hmm. and then eventually you can niche in certain areas but don't niche yourself completely into a hole like i appreciate the kind words you just said to me about my fashion photography um but i'm not just fashion photography i do event photography concert photography i do media work um i do videography a lot of people think i just do photography but no i've been doing videos for over 10 years i just mm -hmm. now recently have done more photography stuff and i've kind of switched a bit but i still actively do both um just like you don't just do um you know shoots with like more on the creative kind of uh unique location stuff i've seen a variety of your different types of photo shoots you do all kinds of work so it's like yes you have a style and yes there is a level of a niche but don't niche yourself so much that you're just known for that like it's good to kind of open up a little bit and try different areas and meet different creatives in different areas because you never know where the collaboration can lead to you and you never know what you can learn from each other mm -hmm. Um, like I remember when we worked together with Save the Creatives and now I'm going to definitely plug them here, um, on the show, uh, for record, I don't get paid for this. The show doesn't get paid. You're not getting paid. No one's getting paid here. It's probably the lights are getting paid here, but not me. Um, <laughs> but I will gladly talk about Save the Creatives just for a brief moment because when we met and when we did our sh little shoot, like I never worked with you, you never yeah. worked with me, yeah. but we collaborated and did multiple photos in that creative space. And now we hit it off so well that we've been doing projects ever since. Yeah. So like, and w I don't want to say we're opposite people or anything like that, but we're two different ideologies and different kind of viewpoints of life, which is great. And I've learned a lot from you and you learn a lot from me. So like, that's the best kind of collaborations. Yeah. So and the funny thing about that day where we met is I didn't want to go. I don't want to go because it was a far drive because I thought like, oh no, I've been in the photography space long enough. Why do I need to keep going to free things? Or why do I need to go practice lighting when like I already understand it and I did end up learning technical things I didn't end up really cool and fun people who I've loved following up with them after the fact and I don't know that day was a learning experience for me to be like you can never stop learning and growing and collaborating like the only way that you grow is by continuing to like support the community that feeds this Mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely I, I I agree and it's kind of tricky as like photographers just because like um it's like the okay i wanted the free projects i wanted the paid projects. what i want to do right i think having i would say like 80 20 like 80 percent should be your paid work and your business work if you're trying to make it to a business but then that 20 percent should be like creative and like hobby wise and collaborating wise and you know having the picking to choose the projects you want out just to for uh tfp or time for print and having those cool projects because i don't know about you and I don't want to speak directly at, on your behalf unless you allow me to, um, you know, um, but I will say like, I did this as a hobby, you know, because it was interesting to me. And then I still have that even from a business sense. Like if I'm not having fun with it, I don't want to keep doing it. Yeah. I like these shows. I like doing the podcast. I like doing the video work. I like meeting people. I like just doing cool, unique things for me because I like doing it. Yeah. If I didn't like doing it, then I would have a harder time being in this space. So not everything should be free. In fact, most of it shouldn't be free if you're established. When you're starting out, it's different. But when it's established, most of it should not be free. But you should always keep a little bit, like a little bit in your back pocket, you know, of just like the cool projects, the projects you're like, yeah, I want to, I, this would be cool to do. This is something I want to do. Yeah, because yeah. at the end of the day, even if you 
don't label yourself a create as a creative. I think we're all creative in some way, and if you're not feeding that little monster that consistently needs inspiration, yeah. it's gonna die on you. Yeah. Nothing's gonna work. No, it it just causes a ripple effect. I don't know. That's a good way to explain it. It's like a little like human. It's a, it's a little ass human. A little ass, real ass, and imaginary yes well we're in miami and there's a lot of imaginary uh, never mind i'm not gonna say that i'm gonna get in trouble uh, um there's a lot of humans in miami there's a lot of humans in the world there's there's millions and millions of humans and a lot of them are little and big and mid-size and all kinds of sizes but just keep a little bit in your back pocket there you go Thanks for the advice, though. That was great, great kind of advice going on with this episode here. And these are questions. I really appreciate it. Um, we're almost towards the end of our episode, but I have just two more questions to ask you. And they're both somewhat funny or indirectly funny or who knows? I don't know. Um, I want to ask you, um, would you rather live in the bottom of the ocean or high above the clouds? Above the clouds. Okay. I mean, I know people that would answer like in the ocean, but no. No, brother, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in the sky, listening to Clocks by Coldplay, having like a little iridescent rainbow potion. Nice. Squeezing the clouds because they all got to feel different. We all learn the different types of clouds. One's got to be harder and not as squishy than the other ones. It's the same thing with the with the little with the asses. You know, you got a big, never, never mind, never <laughs> exactly. mind, never mind. Exactly. You're going to be appropriate. <laughs> I want to be doing that. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. And I'm the same way. I would like to be on the, above on the clouds and just kind of soaring through the air, uh, though trying not to fly around because I can't fly as of this time. No, a cloud would take you. It's your little cloud car. Oh, that's Ooh, we get a cars up there? No. Cloud cars. Car clouds. This episode is sponsored by cloud cars. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine 20 years later, <laughs> hey, we get an article and say like, oh yeah, the first cloud car, car is uh, going up in the air. And I'm like, see? <laughs> Told so you. Cool. So cool. We should get the rights for that. The trademarks. Say we cr created that together. 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll probably be like, yes. Here. There you go. <laughs> proof, proof, proof. Um, I have one more question to ask you. And these are questions in this um, fun episode of the show. And the question I want to ask you is, um, if you had to recruit a team of mythical creatures <gasps> to be on your family feud TV episode... So on okay. the game show, okay, okay, okay. which creatures would you recruit and why? Is it define mythical creatures? Like I think of like fairies and elves and wizards and that kind of sense. Okay. Yeah. And an ancient wizard. Okay. That's, that's good for family feud. Going to know a lot of stuff. And that's why I asked you like define mythical. Because to me, Rick and Morty, if I got to do Rick. That'd be amazing, but I guess. I mean, well, he doesn't. Mythical. He does. He doesn't necessarily believe in the mythicism. He's more. He's all science. So he'd probably give you a very inappropriate answer well, to ask. To so many dimensions. I, I know. That's. So, I mean, I'm. I. I think it's mythical, but he has said on the show multiple episodes that he doesn't believe in that. And that's why we love him. That yeah. Who that's means the, he, like, nagger counteracting person. If we can get like the Szechuan uh, nugget sauce to be on the team, that could be maybe okay. the incentive, you know, to get rig because okay. he likes that. Yes. Yeah. I think that should be a part of the prices. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, can I have both elf and fairies? Sure. Because it's your team. Fairies are just cute and adorable and will like keep up the morale of the team. That's good, yeah. And they care about honesty. So, oh, and for family feud, somebody's lying, they're going to catch it. That's true. And then elves will just be there for mischief. <laughs> just cause havoc. Go distract, go distract the host. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go distract the host. Distract the other team. You know. Go like break that camera real quick. Oh no, we have to like make a short technical build. <laughs> Wild. Break a ten thousand dollar <laughs> camera. Just, just go. Just go. <laughs> Never come back. <laughs> Girl Scout cookies. Like every time you break it. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Follow up with your favorite Girl Scout cookie. I've never even had them. So. Oh, you never had them. Totally, mm -mm. Okay. Fair enough. That's. I, the Girl Scout it's, it's fine. I wish I don't have them because they're not in season right now. Yeah. Um, I'm not obs obsessed with Girl Scout cookies like a lot of people are. But if I did have a good uh, Girl Scout cookie, I mean, Thin Mints and uh, Samoas. Um, I don't know the name of it, but there's like a toffee one. That's like a, it's like a shortbread biscuit cookie. I, I like that, but everyone hates it for some reason. But I like that one. It's good for you. Yeah. I, I like toffee and I like shortbread biscuits. I just like junk food in general. So, you know, food's food. Food is food. 
questions are these? Because these are questions. And this is our segue <laughs> to finish up our episode of These Are Questions. Um, on a serious note, Sophia, uh, thank you so much for taking the time uh, out of your very busy schedule because I know you're running around doing all kinds of crazy madness and that makes you uniquely you. Um, I appreciate you taking the time for being a part of this episode. Um, but now the internet floor is yours. Anything you want to talk about, anything you want to say, anything you want to promote or do before we wrap up this episode of These Are Questions, the internet floor <laughs> Is yours. Yeah, the floor is mine. Yes. Ladies. Gentlemen and fairies. Never forget your magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's there you go. Hey, hey. Simple and straight to the point. Uh, thank you so much again for being a part of this show. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to put all of Sophia's information, um, including her website, um, including her social media, that you could follow. Well, I mean, you can. <laughs> uh, we can write. It was under the poem right here. If you want to put it on there, um, all that information, all that good stuff is going to be on our descriptions down below. Whether you're watching on YouTube.com or listening on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, just know that we appreciate you watching slash listening to the show. Because for everyone that is watching slash listening slash watching slash listening, you have been watching slash listening to these are questions, <laughs> and I made her laugh, so even better. You're welcome. Have a good night, everyone. Or good morning. Or good afternoon. Or good... Have a good one. Have a good one.